I needed a couple handles for the side of a rocking sheep and this is what I came up with. I had to make a jig to do this because I, uh, I didn't want to turn it between two points on the lathe because then you end up cutting off the end and you have to sand it and then finish it after it's already off the lathe. I wanted to turn it, sand it, and finish it just like this all in one shot. So I'll show you the jig that I made for that. Um, and it just screws into a T-nut in the side of the head. You know, on the other side of that plywood, there's one of these guys uh, with the mating thread. And I have two. I'm going to do one more because it's good to have a spare. And um, let's go take a look at the process. That's the jig that I use to turn these things. It's really nothing complicated. Very simple to make. I use two pieces of three-quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. Uh, I'm going to make a new one of these later because I sort of messed up when I was cutting it round on the lathe. I was in a little bit of a hurry. Uh, anyway, all it is is two pieces of plywood sandwiched together with a T-nut in the middle. I uh, used screws to hold the two pieces together initially, and then I popped it onto my, uh, my chuck there, or my uh, face plate, and then I used, if you don't have a, 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 drill, uh, a drill chuck on your lay, that's fine. You can just, uh, you can use the regular uh, other point, as long as you mark exactly center on that piece of wood. Uh, I used I used the a drill bit to drill the hole, so I knew it was exactly center. But you, as long as you can mark it perfectly center, that's fine. It's very important though, because if this is off a little bit when you start to turn, then you're not getting an actual turning. You're going to get a, an odd shape. Um, so you want that that T nut on the other side to be dead center. And then all you got to do is take your uh, your blank, cut to the exact length, because uh, you don't you don't need to lose any off the end like you would if you were turning between two points. I put some washers on there just um, just to give me a little bit of room at the end, so I don't have to cut up my my uh, jig too much like that. And then once that's in there, um, that's it. Now it's ready to turn, and that's that's plenty strong enough that you can put a little bit of pressure on there. Uh, not a lot of pressure, of course, but just enough to sand it and turn it. And uh, I guess let's just do that now. I almost forgot to explain an important part. Inside of this thing, after you drill your hole, you put in what's called a hanger bolt. It's, uh, it has a, a wood thread on one side and a machine thread on the other, so you can uh, screw that into your, your T-nut, and that side gets screwed into the wood. For the finish, I'm going to use this Mod Podge dishwasher safe. Uh, it's a water-based finish. Uh, it dries very hard. It's very durable. I've used it on wooden rings in the past and uh, haven't yet had the finish fail on any of them. So that's what I'm going to use for this. I usually just put on a glove to uh, keep clean. And for the first coat, I'm just going to put some on there just to raise the grain. Turn on the lathe and use uh, this white 3M pad just to, to buff it down a little bit. Yeah, 
it's pretty smooth, I might give it a little touch with some sandpaper. In fact, I think I might, uh, might add a little more finish and then hit it with some wet dry paper. And I think that will uh, fill in the pores a little bit better. And I was experimenting with different ways of actually making this completely smooth like a piece of plastic. Let's see what that does. And what this is doing is it's mixing sawdust with, with the glue and then uh, as the friction and the heat dries the glue or the finish, yeah, like it's starting to happen, it's going to squeeze itself into the pores in the wood and make kind of a slurry that will fill those pores in. So I suspect. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I definitely did smooth it out a little bit. And now with a cleaner, fresh glove, I am going to put on another coat. And this one I'm just going to rub in by hand. And I'm going to turn the lathe back on, but I'm going to touch it really lightly. That's just to help spread it. And that should be right about at the point where I can kind of smooth it out just with my hand now. Just to get rid of the appearance of any brush marks. Looks like I got a couple black spots in there. I might have to sand this down and try it again. That might have been some dirt in that sandpaper. I should not have grabbed a piece of sandpaper that was sitting under the grinder. Uh, it feels pretty good. It's smooth and it's not too tacky. And now I just use my finger to make sure that it feels dry. Generate a little bit more heat and friction. Or friction and heat, more in that order. That's it. One more handle is done.